Hello, once again, good evening, YouTube, from the serenity of my home. And, wow, can I just say, wow, I had to let this one sit for a day just to, just to see what all I could remember the next day. And it is an immense amount, like this, quite possibly, and very likely, is the best Xfinity race in over five years, easily. Because I was going to look on Racing Reference, and I was going to check back in old Xfinity races, and I was going to take a look, and I was going to see exactly which race could come to equaling the excitement of this one. And there probably ain't none. They ain't none. Like... It's really going to have to be between the road courses, in all honesty. Anyway. So, yeah, I, I had to let this one sit for a day. Because I knew that if this race is truly as good as I thought it was, I'd be able to remember everything. And let us begin with Olympics Basketball! Hey! Something that doesn't actually matter. A game that wasn't even for a medal. But it's... Yeah, it's still on, and it's not even the USA team. I mean, the channel that the vi that this race was on, channel, it was USA channel. And if USA was actually in the fucking game, then I could understand having to sit through this. But between two countries from South America, like, who in America gives a shit about... Argentina or Brazil's expertise in basketball. I mean, and everyone on the internet was like, well, sometimes NASCAR gets preempted, so stop your bitching. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I actually want to see the only race this weekend as opposed to shit that's been on every channel, every hour of every day the past week. We had this week three total hours of racing unless you count qualifying. As opposed to 240 hours times the amount of channels that it was on, which would be four minimum. Yeah. I think there was plenty of Olympics elsewhere to supplement the people who wanted to watch the Olympics. And the worst part is that it had to be basketball. I fucking despise basketball. It is the worst. My favorite sports are NASCAR and baseball. And basketball is in such, it's in such a position that it's in between both of them and outside of both of them at the same time. And it takes every quality that's bad about baseball and bad about racing and puts it into something together because that fucking, those overtimes, those overtimes. Because you get sudden death overtimes in football. Now that's far more entertaining. You get extra innings in baseball. You get one, one, the side gets one try and the other side gets another try. In basketball and overtime, you gotta go five minutes no matter what. And don't get me started on fouls. Fouls are foul. And I fucking despise fouls. Like, at that second fucking overtime, two fucking overtimes, on that second overtime when there was three seconds to go, it literally took 1.2 seconds before there was another foul. And there were like three fucking three throw attempts for each foul. And there was like, and there was all like three fouls all together. So that was, at minimum, six free throws in the span of the game. Like, 1.2 seconds of the game. 1.2 seconds of the game and six free throws. All together, that took about seven goddamn minutes. I fucking despise basketball. But anyway, yeah, sorry that I want to watch the only race this weekend as opposed to something that's been going on the entire fucking week, all day, every day. Anyway, so we get to the race, 
And it's already raining! Fantastic! So after about 20 minutes of caution laps, they finally started racing and we saw what made this race fantastic, and that is the strategies and the multiple lane racing and everyone going every which way trying to figure out how to do this because a rain race like this shows who really has the most talent in the field. And that is where Andy Lally and Alan Day come in. Holy mother of God, those two. Do you have any idea how satisfying it is to see a Carl Long dodge in the top three? The number 40, which is normally a start and park, was in third place. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And how about Justin Marks knowing his shit? Hitting his marks. I mean, this race was so... You had to be so... You had to have so much road racing skill to be able to do this. Because Justin Marks himself, Justin Marks, the winner of this race, flew off track twice. And that's all I know. He probably fell and flew off the track multiple times when the cameras weren't even on him. Two times off the track for Justin Marks. Two times off the track. Insane, dude. Insane. How about Sam Hornish Jr.? He could not catch a break, break in this race. Finished second. I think literally every single lap he spun around at least once. He got hit by Brandon Poole under caution and wrecked. People were wrecking under caution. Like this race... It was either the most entertaining race ever or the biggest shit show ever. And I honestly put those two together and I'd say this was probably, yes, this is undoubtedly the best Xfinity race in so long. And we haven't even started. How about when the rain transitioned to dry? How about that, that load of strategy there? Like, when that run started, it was wet and it transitioned into dry. Like, I think there was a caution and Andy Lally went into pit road and got the dry tires on. And over that, the course of that run, it went from dry, it went from wet to dry. And when it was all said and done, there was a four-way battle for the lead that happened organically over the course of a run. A four-way battle for the lead! With Andy Lally and Sam Hornish coming up behind them. And then it started raining again. And that's when the shit show started, yo. Oh my god, everyone was wrecking and it was glorious. It was glorious. To see exactly how much skill was required to navigate through this. Like, undoubtedly this was the most... This, this race required the most talent, and to see guys like, like Justin Marks up there, to see guys like Alan Day up there, to see guys like Daryl Wallace Jr., everyone doubting Jer Daryl Wallace Jr. I mean, if he, if he had stopped that whole wrecking, like, literally every five seconds, like, that could have shut everyone up as far as Daryl Wallace Jr.'s talent. I mean... Even fucking Ryan Reed was up there. I was dumbfounded watching Ryan Reed actually doing good there for a while. Still didn't manage to get a top 10, but eh. So. And I'm just thinking about guys in this race, such as Andy Lally and Alan Day and even Justin Marks. What could they do in a car like the 18 week in and week out? Just to see guys like even the accomplished guy Owen Kelly not be able to handle himself on this track. It's like, this race saw so many different lead leaders, so many different lead changes, so many different ways to lose the lead and to gain the lead, so many different strategies going on all at the same time. 
that it wasn't really until that final, those two final restarts, until you got a good idea of who was actually going to win this race. And even then, with the downpour coming in, like everything, everything in this race was going against Justin Marks there at the end. Like when he had a 15 second lead and then the, and then the green white checkered started. I thought for sure he was going to lose. But he made it. He made it on that restart. He got past him. He got out. And I was thinking, all right, finish it up, man. And then the last lap, it just started torrentially downpouring. Just, it was, this weather was doing everything in his power to make sure that Justin Marks did not win this race. And Justin Marks still won this race. And that is amazing. The skill that is required. The the patience. It's amazing watching that race, how everything unfolded, how all the adversity that every driver in the field had to face. Hornish wrecking at least 10 times in this race. And still managing to finish second. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. And I mean, yeah, I mean, this was a three hour long race. This felt like a cup race. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time watching this shit. Thrilling race. Absolutely thrilling. But you know what we should do? We should take Mid-Ohio off the schedule and we should run a second Pocono race as a companion week Yet again, when after Pocono comes back the second time for the Cup Series. That is what we should do. That is what we should do right there. Yeah. Or better yet, better yet, let's just go to Indianapolis a second time for the Xfinity Series. There you go. You know what, let's just run the entire Xfinity schedule at Indianapolis. Just every single race. Indy. Gotta do Indy. And don't give me none of that fucking IRP bullshit. No. No. We gotta run every single race at Indianapolis. Otherwise, it's gonna be utter fucking shit. It's going to be utter fucking shit if we don't run every single solitary race at a flat two and a half mile track. I mean, I mean, who would want to watch something where strategy matters? Where every lap matters, where every turn matters, where when you put on your slicks as opposed to your rain tires makes all the difference and someone from the back can drive their way to the front in five laps, such as Aylin Day, such as Andy Lally. I mean, who would want to watch a race where every second strategy is unfolding before you, like, like a like a like a paper crane, a paper mache something that unfolds before you, like a beautiful flower springing out of the rain-soaked soil. Who would want to watch that as opposed to another two and a half mile flat super speedway? But that's just my opinion. I mean, JGR winning every single race, Kyle Busch winning every single race is far more entertaining than watching strategy play out before you. Anyway, that's basically what I have to say here. Like this entire race, just wow. This entire race, just wow. What a fantastic race. I, I kind of want to sit down and flip through race review, race reference, and see exactly when there was a better race than this. Like I can only think back to Mid-Ohio last year. And even that, it wasn't exactly that competitive. The final laps, fantastic. But it really wasn't that amazing. There were some wrecks. There was some stuff like that. But it wasn't until the very last turn that anything of interest actually happened. This race was entertaining from the second that Olympics basketball coverage ended. It was phenomenal. More, please. More road courses, please. Because if you increase the amount of road courses, that increases the odds of it, of it raining. Because 
if you increase the amount of NASCAR races in your area, it virtually means that there will be rain in some way, shape, or form impacting your area over the course of the weekend. Because that is your, that is your absolute guarantee from me to you. Host a NASCAR sanctioned event, and I guarantee goddamn you, it'll start raining. This is the way to solve the California dr drought. Let's go to Mazda. Let's go to Mazda, huh? Let's go race at Sonoma as well. We just bring the reins to the world. Anyway, I'm starting to, my, my voice is starting to go away, so I'm just going to end it here. And I don't think there's really a need for a rant of the week. Because this was too good. This race was too great. Too great to be angry. There's absolutely no reason to be angry about this race. There's absolutely no reason to be angry with anything having to do with it. It was a fantastic race. Everything was good about it. Loved it. I want to have sex with it. I can't, though, because it's a race and not something physical. So I'm not allowed to do that. In any case... Thank you all so much for watching this race review. I will see you after the Bristol race. And yeah, I think that's about it. So, yeah, I really don't have anything special to share with y'all this week. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. And I hope you enjoyed watching that race because it was great and stuff. Bye.